In our previous session, we talked about Mach, and now we will focus on the H. We will focus on headless content management with PIMCOR. Now, it's all about headless content management now, and so far it was possible to export documents, data in a headless way, just via the Data Hub. And now with the new headless document plugin, you can also structure and manage the data in a headless approach without using any twig templates or anything, or actually data objects. And with the plugin, PIMCore becomes hybrid CMS, where it is possible to use traditional CMS and headless CMS in at the same time. Time. We will answer the questions why it is actually worth talking about the headless approach and what are the problems that we are solving with it. Please welcome on stage core developer at PIMCore, Divesh Pahuja. Hello, everyone. I hope you are having a great time today. I'm really excited to be on this stage today, as I'm going to show you how to manage headless content within PIMCore. As you just heard Dietz talking about how PIMCore offers powerful and robust APIs to cater microservices and headless architecture. And with Data Hub Bundle, it goes to next level with different output possibilities like GraphQL, REST, and so on. And with our amazing new bundle, Headless Documents, you can also manage and structure the headless content within the headless documents. And now we will see the complete headless approach in action. Before we jump into the demo, let's talk about headless CMS and how it is different from traditional CMS. A headless CMS is all about structuring and delivering content, so it can be reused across different platforms and channels. This type of CMS is very flexible and scalable, as it can serve data without the intervention of presentation layer. So let's look at the different CMS types. In traditional CMS, we have a backend layer, which takes care of the content body. And we have a frontend layer, which is the presentation for the content. And these two layers are tightly coupled which offers a better experience to content editors as they can preview the data while editing it. In headless CMS, the front-end part is kicked out, and the data is served through API to different platforms like web, e-commerce, mobile apps, and so on, so that you don't need to stick to one front-end technology, which makes it scalable. In decoupled CMS, you get best of both worlds. So you have a front end, which is tightly coupled for better experience and ease of use. And you have APIs to serve data to different platforms for scalability, which is the case with PIMCore when it provides headless CMS capabilities. So we can structure the headless content with the headless documents bundle. We can author and persist the headless document with the PIMCore core. And the same headless content can be exported through Data Hub Bundle. Now let's take a deeper look at these two bundles, which completes the headless approach. With headless documents bundle, you can create a new document type, which is purely based on YAML structure, called as headless templates. So you don't need to work with any templating engine or Twig templates. And it also provides editing interfaces for managing these configurations. It's really awesome. And with Data Hub Bundle, as you already know, that it supports querying data through GraphQL APIs, which is the on-demand language for APIs. So you can fetch the data from PIMCore with queries. And you can also update and uh, create and update data into the PIMCore with mutations. I can't wait to see these two bundles in action. So it's time to jump into the demo. For demo use case, I will create a simple block with static site generator for Inspire events which consumes headless content from PIMCore through GraphQL API. So let's start the video. First, we need to define the structure for headless content. And for that, we have this amazing bundle called headless document. So we can define headless bricks, uh, which are similar to standard document bricks that can be used on multiple headless documents. 
And we also have the possibility to define headless templates, which defines the structure for headless content. So let's add a template now. Inspired demo. And in this template, uh, we can define layouts. So we can use grid, simple, and tab panel layout. We can group the uh, templates into the folders on the left-hand section. And under content, we can define layout uh, panels and edit tables that you can use on standard documents. So I'm going to use this nice help section to add a simple layout to my template. This really saves my time, because I don't have to type all the configuration. Now, we have headline and description edit table. So let's add some more edit tables for the, for the block page. So now let's add the image edit table and format it according to the YAML structure. And last, we need date edit table for the event date that will be shown on the block. Now our template is ready. So now we can create a headless document based on this template. So first, let's save the template. And let's create a new headless document based on this template. Again, I'm going to name it Inspire 2021. And great, that document is created, so we can add some content now for the block page that will be shown on the static block site. And let's add some description here. Even though it's not required, but it's always better to have description for blocks. And let's add an image that will be served as a block banner image and an event date. And let's save the document. Now let's see how we can add on-demand edit tables to the headless documents. And for that, we need to define headless bricks. So I already have some bricks here, so I can create a new brick for the Inspire demo. And in the brick template, uh, we need to define edit tables, which can be added on demand on the headless document. So let's add some edit tables from the help section. So let's use a video edit table here. And of course, let's structure it according to the YAML. And let's add a Visivic edit table to have the video description for the brick. So now the brick template is ready. It's time to use that brick on headless template. And for that, we need to add an area block edit table to the headless template, which basically acts as a container for the brick. So I'm going to add the area block edit table from the help section. And in the config allowed section, we need to define all the bricks that can be added to the headless document. So let's define image, video, and the new brick that we have just created, Inspire Demo. And let's save it. And let's reload the document and see how we can add this on-demand editable. So you see, that's how you add the on-demand editables to the headless documents. However, I'm not going to use the brick data for the simple block. So now, the document is ready with all the edit tables. We need to define the GraphQL API now to expose this data through Data Hub Bundle. So let's create a new GraphQL endpoint. In the endpoint configuration, we can define active and inactive status, description of the endpoint, and so on. And in the schema definition, we define all the elements and properties that can be queried with GraphQL. So here we define mutation and query schema and general type schema for documents and assets. So right now, let's give read permission on the documents schema. In the security definition, we define authentication and authorization for the API endpoint. So let's generate an API key for the authentication. And in the workspaces, we define element permissions that we want to fetch from PIMCore, or we update into PIMCore. So let's give read permission here. So our GraphQL API endpoint is ready. So now we can use GraphQL play Playground to form the query that can be used by external system to fetch the data from headless document. So I'm going to use 
a get doc document query here, and in the parameter, we define ID, which is the ID of the document that we have just created. And in the return block, I'm going to use GraphQL inline fragment notation to request the headless document. And just like the standard documents, we can request all the properties that we have for this headless document. So right now, I'm just going to request ID and full path. And let's run the query. So we have this information now. Similarly, we can also request editables data. And again, for editables, I'm going to use this GraphQL inline fragment notation to request all the editables data that will be shown on the block page. So let's add editable input for the headline text, editable visivic to request the description text, and then editable image, which, which returns the asset. And we can request any asset property here. So let's request a full path of the image. And at last, we need editable date to fetch the event date for our block page. So I'm going to use a formatted date here. And we need to provide a format parameter so that we get the date in the human readable format. And let's run the query. So we have all the information except the image is null. And the reason is that we have not provided the workspace permissions on the assets folder. So we need to give read permission on the assets folder so that we can read the asset image. So we have successfully requested all the data with the GraphQL API now. Finally, it's time to consume the headless content via GraphQL API. And for that, I'm going to use this uh, static site generator here, which is based on Vue.js. And the Data Hub endpoint is integrated with the API key. And for front end, I'm using the index view page, uh, which uses the uh, GraphQL get folder query which gets the list of headless documents and show it on the page. And I have event view page, which is the main block detail page, which uses the get document query that we have just formed in the GraphQL playground to fetch the detail of the headless documents. And now let's see how the block looks. So let's copy the link that is generated by the static site generator, and let's hit the block. So you see the content is now displayed uh, from the uh, PIM core, which is the headless content, and it is served through GraphQL API. Isn't it amazing to see that how you can set up and utilize headless content in few minutes with these bundles, and that too without writing a single piece of code? All right, if you'd like to try a new headless CMS bundle, which is at PIM core we call headless documents, it is available in Cloud Edition and also an enterprise edition. Thank you very much. That's all from my side today. Divesh, wow. Hi, Felix. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. God, you, you gave me a surprise there. I, I wasn't ready to come on stage yet because you have one minute left. Gives me time to ask you some questions. Sure, go ahead. Um, now, in your presentation, I saw that you can actually create um, headless docu documents and, well, web documents. Why did you actually choose that approach for your headless approach? And why did you choose the setup this way? I think it's the best approach to use the same existing user interface, as users are familiar with the document section, and they know how to use it. So I think uh, keeping the headless uh, documents next to the uh, actual standard documents, it's, it's the best approach that we can use. OK, all right. And I have another question. Now, as PIMCO already offers editorial content management through PIM, MDM, and one can use that for serving headless data to different endpoints, how does it differ from the approach of creating data objects? I totally agree with you. You can still use data objects that can be served as headless content to external system. However, with headless documents bundle, you get the possibility to use the same editing uh, editor interface like the standard documents. So uh, you get the same features like inheritance, uh, localization, and so on. 
And uh, think about the scenarios when you have to deal with different user roles uh, uh, with who manages the master data on one side and web content data on the other side. So it right. solves that sol uh, challenge. OK, solves that challenge. Perfect. Divash, we will see you later on when we, well, look into the future when we talk about the roadmap for 2022. Yeah. Thank you for now. Thank and you. we will be back in just a few moments. And it's going to be magic.